Hi, I'm Margie and welcome back to my kitchen. What I made today was a big pot of caramel. And what I did with the caramel, the soft caramel, I made some caramel apples. And I made, which we decorated with some chocolate. And also, we placed them down in, into some pecans. Not all of them, because not everybody eats nuts. And then I made some turtles with some pecans. There's some chocolate on top, caramel and, and pecan nuts, whole pecans. And then with the rest of the caramel, I put it into, this is a 9 by 13 pan, which I poured it in and it started to get harder because I, the way I put it in there, it sort of makes it so it's a, it'll be thick like a caramel and then it's almost, it has to cool off completely and it hasn't quite done that. And then later I'm going to cut them into little squares either dip them in chocolate or not dip them in chocolate. It's fine. I'll wrap them in some wax paper. But this video really is to show you how to do the caramel apples. So we're going to get started right away. Let's talk about the apples first. Now with, when it comes to the apples themselves, you wash them, wash them well, and then you're going to take out their little stems. Okay, so you just go ahead and twist them out. And you want to dry them. You want to push, push straight down to the, to the bottom and just let it be right there. Okay. And so go ahead and do that with all of your apples. Try to go straight down. Once it's in, don't take it out, just leave it there. All right, so there. What I have on this tray is what you start with. Okay, you're going to put, this is one cup of melted butter, one and a half cups of light corn syrup, two cups of half and half, one cup of brown sugar, and one and a half cups of white sugar. Some of the utensils that are good to use with this is when you're stirring your caramel, this has a nice flat bottom. Okay, so you can really scrape, you know, the bottom of your pan to keep it from burning. That's very important to have. And I have a, so many of these because we make the English toffee and they're just perfect for that. When you're all done, if you can have, this is always good to have if you like to make candy, are utensils that can tolerate high heat. I always will take a pan with some saran wrap and you can, you don't have to do this, but I put some nuts down. Not everybody can eat nuts, so be careful in regard to nuts and allergies. But you dip the apple and you can place it right down on your nuts and so any caramel that flows to the bottom will pick up some nuts and that will be awesome. The very last thing I want to tell you about is, I'm, oh, I only have six apples here but I know I'm going to have more caramel. And later on, what I can do with the extra caramels, I can cut it up into pieces and dip that in chocolate. Just gives me, or gives me another option. I can also pour some on top of those pecans and make some turtles. <laughs> I'll show you that, some things you can do. But in the end, when you have some left, this is one way to save what you have left. And when it cools off, you can cut little squares. So we're ready to get started making the caramel. Now this is my pot, it has a very heavy bottom to this pot, and I have my temperature on high, okay? So I'm going to start with my butter, I always do that because it helps, I think it helps the, butter, the candy from sticking later on. If I start with melted butter, I could be wrong, it's just what I do. Okay, so now I'm going to put the, this is the corn syrup. I have my temperature on high because you want to try to cook the candy as quickly as you can. But at the same time, be careful to make sure it doesn't burn. So you always want to be, not always be stirring it, but I'll show you. You want to just keep an eye on the bottom. So here we have our half and half. Now I'm going to put my sugars. And you see, I drop them right into the center. I try not to get any sugar on the side of my pot. 
Okay. I lost my wooden stick. I got another one here. Don't ask me why it's burnt. <laughs> but, so I just sort of break it up. I'm not really stirring it so it gets on the side. Now you want to make sure that before this comes to a boil that all the sugar is dissolved. Now the only thing I have left is the vanilla which I'm going to save until a little later. Now this is starting to come to a boil right around the edge so I'm going to stir that in. And you can feel on the bottom of the pot that all this sugar is melted. At this point you also want to introduce your thermometer. Let's make sure that bulb is under the candy liquid. Now we're going to wait for this to come up to 240 and then we're going, I'm going to stir it a few times, not too, too much, but just a few times and be careful not to scrape the sides of the pot. Now this is starting to boil up and you're going to think it's going to boil over in this pot and you're going to get really nervous but it's not going to boil over. My recipe says that you cook it to 240 and then you watch it I guess stir it, I guess that's what they mean by watch it, because that is important because it will start to stick to the bottom of the pan and then if it does it'll burn. So you really do, once it gets to 240, you want to start to stir it more first so you can loosen whatever's on the bottom. I don't really feel anything on the bottom, you'd see it on the bottom of the spoon. Now this has reached 240 so I'm watching it very carefully till it gets up to 248. And I actually take it off a moment before that because I don't want them to get too hard. Otherwise they turn into sugar daddies. Okay, that's done. I'm going to take that out. I am going to let this cool in here for a moment. Just let the bubbles start to come down a little bit. All right, so we'll just let that sit for a moment, then I'll add my vanilla. And at this point I can start using this other scraper because it's heat tolerant. Now when you do add your vanilla, be careful because this might splatter a little bit from the liquid. So I even suggest that you use a pot holder for your hand, for the hand that you're going. You can dump it in with one, you can dump this in without the pot holder on, but when you go to stir it in, you hear that? It splatters a little bit. And you can go along the sides now because this was a fresh new pot. Now there's your caramel. You can do anything you want with that now. But see, now you're just going to put your, put the apple in and give it a quick turn. You don't have to go to the very top of the apple, especially when they're pretty like that. Then you want to place it down in your nuts. And it will pick up some of the nuts. There are not too many of them, but you'll have a few little nuts on the bottom inside that caramel that flows down. Try a green one. You can bring it all the way to the top if you want. You can also let the caramel cool for a minute. That looks pretty good. If you don't want any nuts on your apple, you can just set it right down. It's a little tiny one. This is so cute. Now with the rest of your caramel, okay, but you can scrape the sides now, okay, because this is not the pan you cooked in. What you can do is just pour this in. This is a I have some parchment on the bottom, you don't need that, but I have saran wrap or plastic wrap and just go ahead and pour that in. 
Go ahead and pour it in. Scrape out your whole pan. You don't want to lose any. Be careful not to let this touch you. It's still pretty hot. Now to make it as thick as you want, a little trick I learned as well, just bring, because your, your saran wrap is over the side here and over the side here, okay, bring this over and it will literally just thicken up. All right, bring it as far up as you want, however thick you think you'd like it to be, for a caramel. And then just curl your saran wrap underneath and it will stay there. And let that cool overnight, not in the refrigerator. These don't need to be refrigerated at this point. When you're ready to decorate, you can just melt your chocolate. And I have a, a little video on how to make these little paper cones. Okay. So make up a little paper cone. Don't do it over your things. Okay, I took them out of their little papers. My suggestion really would be to, when you dip your apples, just to dip them and put them directly down on the saran wrap, and then you can put them in the papers later. So I'm just going to cut a very tiny little piece off the bottom, and then you can just kind of go around your apple. Turn it in your hand. doesn't have to be fancy or too much chocolate either. I don't honestly think it needs any chocolate, but this is how they do that. And they'll keep putting layers of chocolate on. I'm not going to put it on all of them. Just give it a spin around. It doesn't really need a whole lot. Like I said, you can put as much on as you like. Just give it a, just turn your apple and make your stripes. Now you want it to cool completely before you would put it into a paper. You can also use milk chocolate. I use dark chocolate and white chocolate. Now these are completely cool. So you can go ahead and put them into your parchment paper. To wrap the caramel apples, you want to get a bag. This is a cello bag that has a side to it. And you can get these kind of bags at a store that's like a craft store or a store that sells candy supplies you can just go ahead and open them up all the way okay and now all you want to do is take some curly ribbon or any kind of ribbon that you like i'm going to use this shiny ribbon here i always love this ribbon it's going to cut a nice piece because i can tie a bow you want to make it as tight as you can Make a bow so it's easier for somebody to get into it. I always am a firm believer in bows rather than a knot. I pull my little loops really small and then I can pull it tight. And then you can leave your tails long and you can give them a curl. So there you go. You have a little caramel apple. You can use more colorful ribbon if you like. You can use ones for the fall. You can use maroon or green and yellow and orange and red, all those fun things. Let's see how nice this caramel apple cuts. Take a nice sharp knife. Some nice soft caramel. Looks delicious. See how nice and soft the caramel is? Well, thank you for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed learning how to make caramel and dipping apples and making turtles and so forth. So I'll be back soon. Bye.